Happy New Year. Welcome back to Temple Baptist Church Online Devotion. I'm glad that you're with me today. Um, today, I'm finishing up the gifts that are found in the Christmas story. Um, and this is the, the last of those things that I wanted to cover. And this is the gift of peace. You know, if, if we could ask everyone around the world, what would you want to see over the course of this coming year? you know, the majority of people probably would say peace on earth. But well, God has already made it possible for men to have peace on earth. There isn't peace on earth because of sin in the hearts of men. Because of sin, men are selfish, and because of sin, men are self-centered. Because of sin, men want what they want, and because they want what they want, they're willing to destroy others in order to get what they want, or in order to have accomplished what they think is <clears throat> they think is best. But God has already given us the gift of peace. And that gift of peace is found in Jesus Christ, his son. At the end of the Christmas story, um, we we find that um, the angels have talked to um, the angels have talked to the shepherds that were out in the field tending their flock. And then the angels um, sing. And there's a multitude of angels as we read in um, chapter 2 of the book of Luke. Um, there is a multitude of angels that are praising God and they're singing. And the shepherds are able to hear the singing. And in verse 14, this is what we this is what we read that they are singing at that time. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Peace and goodwill toward men. This is God's peace extended to humanity that's found in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Men are condemned already because they have not called upon the name of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But when they call upon the name of Jesus, that condemnation is pushed aside. They're given the salvation that God has for them in Jesus Christ. And at that very moment, there is established between God and man a peace, and it is established because of Jesus Christ and what he has done. It's not possible for men to, um, to have that peace on their own. It's not possible for them to work toward that peace, to gain that peace, to attain that peace on their own. It is only possible through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus promised his disciples that he would give them peace, not as the world has peace, but as the peace that would come from God the Father, a peace that would surpass all understanding, a peace that could calm one's heart and know that although their hands um, could not do for them all of the things that would, necessary, would be necessary for survival, God the Father's hand would rest upon them and that his hands would move and work and provide all that was necessary in life. The gift of peace between God and man is Jesus Christ. And the gift of peace between a man and another man is Jesus Christ. When both people know Jesus as Lord and Savior, they have the peace that God intended for them to have with himself, and then they're able to have peace with each other, a husband and a wife. When they both have peace with God the Father, then it makes it possible for them to both have peace with each other, a man and another man. When they both have peace with God the Father, it makes it possible for them to grow in peace with each, with each other. An Israeli person and an um, Arab person, if they both had peace with God the Father, they'd both be able to have peace peace with each other. A black man, a white man, an Asian man, a European man, an old man, a young man, women of all 
ages of all races, of all tongues, able to have peace. That's what we see, that men are brought together by the peace that they have in Jesus Christ, and that someday they will be gathered together, and they will, because of that peace that's found in Jesus Christ, they will be gathered together. It says in, um, over in Revelation chapter 7, it's, John writes and says, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. That scene comes about because of the peace that Jesus has established, a peace that you can know, that I have already come to know, a peace that's available to every person on the face of the earth when they say yes to putting their faith in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. I hope and trust that you've already done that. Today, January the 1st, 2024, make today if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, the day that you say, Lord, I repent of trying to do it myself. Lord, I turn to you, knowing that you have established peace for me in Jesus, that his death upon the cross has paid for my sin so that I can have peace with you and peace with others. I accept that, and I, I take you as my Lord and my Savior. Guide me. And make me the person you want me to be. Would you do that today if you've never done it? And start this day the way that it needs to be for the rest of your life. As a child of God. You know, if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come and join us here at Temple Baptist Church. We meet on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. and on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. And we would love to have you. God bless you and I hope that you'll return next time as we get started in a new series for 2024. Bye-bye.